Hey guys, what's up? Logo again, gonna actually start a kind of uh, little videos on some albums that I think were obscure, bands that were also obscure, not in the albums they released, and the influence they had on many bands. First up is a group from uh, Washington State, more uh, likely Tacoma, the Sonics, which you're hearing in the background, and uh, great album. They were definitely R&B influenced, uh, rock and roll influenced, Little Richard and people like that. They were a great band. They came out in the early 60s and they definitely influenced a lot of people. There was other groups like them, kind of similar to the Sonics. One that comes to mind is a group from, of all places, who would be South America, Peru. The group called Los Psychos, which had a sound like the Sonics. And even though the Los Psychos claim they never listened to any American bands or rock and roll at the time, or even British early, early, very early British invasion bands. Sounds quite odd that they didn't, and it would sound the way they did. Maybe that's what made them so unique. And of course, uh, the Sonics were a great band. Um, still are, still playing, still gigging. I'm not sure if all the original members are with them. And, uh, it's definitely an album to have. And of course, uh, people go Nirvana. It's what they think is Green River Mud Honey, the first band that came out of uh, Seattle or Washington. State, state of Washington, that's wrong obviously. There were groups like the Sonics who were very underground, the Kingsmen, of course, you know, the big of Louie Louie, but the Sonics covered also, but the Sonics never did reach the level of fame Louie Louie had, even if the, if the Kingsmen were basically a one-hit wonder band. Uh, music, we, uh, I mean, just the singing of the Sonics and the, the rhythms to me are far superior on the Kingsmith by a long shot. And uh, songs like Money, the, the, the versions that they did for Psycho, which uh, if you guys have seen, actually I did a video about six, seven, eight months ago, maybe close to a year ago, that was pretty intense and funny in my opinion. Maybe it's not funny to you guys, but it was funny to me to record it. Uh, lip singing to Psycho. So, like I said, great band, garage band, I love garage band. The Cycle, The Monks, The American GI, Spike Station back in Germany. There's a lot of great stuff like that that I dig. Spanish group of Bravos, a lot of the beat bands, freak beat bands, early Yardbirds, blues, and like they used to say, rave up music. Uh, the precursors of punk, like the, like the Sonics, or Psychos, all these groups uh, that it started. And then, of course, in the late 60s, you had bands like the Stooges, and, and MC5 and stuff like that, but bands like, you know, the Sonics, which were basically a hodgepodge of early Little Richard, Chuck Berry, influenced rock and roll with R&B songs also in the mix, sounding very soulful and rock and rollish and intense. I mean, I can't imagine this music at the time must have been insane. I'm sure parents were banning their kids from listening to bands like the Sonics back when they released this album in 64, 65. <laughs> To me, it's still amazing. So uh, I was able to get a hands on uh, one of the uh, few albums that the Cycles released. I think this is the second album, actually. The first one is um, the one that's called um, uh, Here Are the Sonics. But this is the second one, which is Boom. And the name Boom really is the great name. I don't know who came up with it on the band, but uh, it's cool that they did. And uh, this one has a live version of Psycho. I know the first one has a bigger one, the one you guys are hearing now. This is on Norton Records. This is a really good copy. This is the first reissue in 1998. And it's beautiful. It's actually a gatefold album. And um, it's awesome. I mean, this album is really good. I mean, you guys got to get this reissue album. It's not cheap. I mean, the reissue is not cheap. I mean, if, you got, you got, if you already have, own, or you can get your hands on the original first press, man, you're talking about a very valuable record in terms of not only music, music but money-wise. Uh, it's probably worth three, four hundred dollars at least in mint condition. Um, but this one's great. This is a beautiful reissue on Norton Records. This Boss Hoss. I mean, it's it's almost mint. And check out the pictures. It talks about them when they were known as the Whalers, and they were touring the Pacific Northwest. I mean, these guys just awesome man. Were ahead of their time in the in, in the sense that they influenced punk rock and. They're great rock and roll, they had sex. I mean, you know, the dances that they would go to, where they are. These guys are great, I mean, just, just the singing is, is fantastic on it. I mean, it really is. I mean, Boss Hoss, The Witch, 
you know, Gary Rosalie, man, that guy's, that guy's, uh, sounded great. I mean, the vocals that this, that these guys had. I mean, it was incredible. You know, Rob also. Man, these guys are great. There you go, there's the Sonic and there's the back cover, and of course, anybody knows that when you have the barcode, it's a real issue. Obviously, it wasn't barcodes back in 64, 65. But it's a mono press. This is actually a mono press. If you have it and you get to reissue it, I highly recommend you get to reissue. Check out that it says mono and it has like a label NN Northwest 905 for what? The, their area code. And Norton Records. And there's of course the N for Norton. This is an album. Guys, get it. Really get it. I mean, get it. Listen to the MP3, what you want before you can get the album. It sounds really good and you guys are going to really love it. Dig it. On another note, uh, I, I was able to get recently, you guys have to have this if you're of course Beatle Maniacs and you love the Beatles. It came out on Time Life and you know, they released great Beatles special before Time Life and Elvis specials also. And that, which I do have almost, not all of them released, but a good majority of them they have. But this one came out like a week ago and guys, you have to get this, it's basically all in the ultimate album by album guy. Special Rolling Stone edition. This is by this is Rolling Stone put it out. I don't really dig Rolling Stone magazine that much anymore, but this is a great, great special that they did on the Beatles. I mean, it's got you know pictures on them. It's really good. It really is is worth it. Uh, you know. So I hope you guys liked it. The Sonics definitely you should get the couple of albums that they released. You know, there was a live album also. If I'm not wrong. Um, and if you guys have the original pressings, which I'm sure there's guys out there that have the original first press, please put it on a video response. I'd love to see the first press. Hell, I mean, that's great. <laughs> you know, like I said, I have around 1,500 and roughly 25 records. Yes, I'm, I'm a nut, I know, to know almost to the T what I have. And that might have 10 reissues of that. 10, 180 gram reissues. And of course, this is not 80 gram, it's a reissue. But between 180 grams of regular reissues, about 10 I'll have at the most. So, I'm not big into reissues. Of course, I prefer, like a lot of you guys, the first press, but I'm starting to grow to like the reissues. The Yardbirds reissue that I just listened to, that I showed you in a previous video of Little Game, sounds incredible. Sundays does a great job. Gary at uh, Tracks and Wax Records, the owner, even told me, he said, You know, I have a lot of reissues, and you should start checking them out. I mean, if you can't get the first press, you know, and, or you don't have the money to get the first press that's available, Get yourself the closest thing to it, which is a reissue, as long as the reissue is done the right way. Of course, now don't don't give me a, a reissue that's shitty, or that you slap together just to make a quick buck. I don't want that. You know, buying one which I don't have, even though I have the CDs, is the 13 Florida Bay, it's their first album on reissue, and it wasn't expensive at all. It was around 15, I think, or at the most, I think, it was 20 dollars for it. You know, of course, sealed, like all 180 grams should be in general. And I'm thinking of getting that one because I'm starting to dig some of these reissues now and see that, especially, you know, labels like Sundays do an excellent job. The Yardbirds, excellent job. The Beach Boys, Pet Sounds, I have, I have it in reissue and I had the original one. Uh, I had, let me just say that. Uh, not that I gave it away or something, but, you know, something happened and unfortunately I didn't have it anymore, so I was able to get the reissue. The 180 gram, and it's really, really good. So. Hope you guys are doing great. I was reading this. The Beatles is awesome. Uh, I was gonna do a video on the Beatles records. I already done a few, I know, but uh, uh, it was like hell. It's like I have like 80 records of the Beatles between official releases, imports, and bootlegs. You know, so I was like, you know, crap. I wanna, you know, you guys have seen them already, and uh, you know, they're great, obviously. But <laughs> a lot of records to present. That's a really long ass video. Uh, 20. Mm, almost 25 minutes and you know that's might be a little too boring it might be fun it might not so I say let's leave my videos uh, like 10 minutes or under that is pretty good for me so there we go man wow that's that's a good version man that's sung with soul no doubt and man that sounds awesome to begin with Okay, dudes. <laughs> you know now why, of course. I use the loco moniker, even though my name is JC, Juanito, Juan Carlos, whatever, you know. But love the music. I can manage potato. 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 I can manage
can do the twist. Like Gary said to me, he said, you know what, there's a lot of good music out there today, but it's basically a lot of rehash from music that we love from the 60s and 70s or the 50s, 60s and 70s. And I go, yeah. So he said to me, new music in general is really shitty. And I was like, not all of it, but a lot of it is. Now, don't get me wrong, guys, don't get offended. There are some, some good new bands coming out, but I have to give it to Gary that you really are not reinventing the wheel. It's basically all been done, almost, almost. Maybe not, maybe you're right, there's something new that can come out of music, but it's a lot of reinventing the wheel, basically. You know? Old candy in a new package, basically. You know if you want to call it that. Some of it is not even candy, some of it is just charcoal. It's a thing really bad. But yeah, there's some good new music out. Hey, don't get me wrong, there is. Uh, I don't have almost any of it in my collection, but I know there is. I'm kind of listening to some of it in the internet and going, Okay, not that bad. But I guess when you're spoiled with, you know, in many cases, the precursors and the real thing, it's tough to go for like a, to put it in a football slash soccer mode, going from the pure Premier League to the second division, it's really tough. So, okay guys, hope you guys are doing well. Oops, there goes the elitist in me. Sorry, I didn't want to sound like a, like a pretentious prick. Um, you know, not at all, not at all, because you know, there's always new bands I'm discovering with all you guys, from Derek, uh, hell, all you guys, Joe Spencer, all you guys, well, I mean, can't name, what, 200 people that, that, constantly 300 people post great LP videos. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry I kept rambling on about it. There's a witch, great song. And, um, not Halloween's coming up soon, so, man, you gotta love that, man, with the sex coming in like that. Man, these guys were... I mean, you have a singer like this, dude. This guy was like the incarnation of Little Richard in white skin almost, you know? Hey, Paul, Paul McCartney, early Beatles Paul McCartney. Now, I know you tried and you did a pretty decent job also at right? imitating Little Richard, but uh, this guy was really good. Uh, I don't think they have anything to do with Animal House with the movie, which I love that movie. So anyway, guys, you know, there, there was a ramble, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And you're listening to the Sonics more. That's what I'm talking. I want you guys to listen in the background. There's a good piano going on. And if you guys do have the albums, like I said, please post them. And uh, why don't you want to, if you guys want to throw a straight on these like obscure beat bands, punk bands, if you want to call them that, of the early 60s, I know you guys have a shitload of them that, you know, I, I my jaw drops when I see them. Um, I know some friends come over to my house and go, holy crap, you got a pretty decent record collection. I go, well, I have 1,500, which to me is a hell of a lot. Many people know, many people have 5,000, 6,000, 3,000, 10,000, that's cool. Over my lifetime, I probably owned about close to 5,000 between the ones that I used to purge, which I don't do anymore. Pretty crazy on my part, but anyway. Um, so, hope you guys liked it and you have a great one. And I know this video went on. Holy crap, it's over 13 minutes. Love all you guys in the VC community. Peace again. This is Juan Carlos saying, hope you had a great one. Uh, yeah, there you see the background. There's a Beatles poster with a lot of the official releases. Uh, I'm trying to think, in the U.S., basically, yeah. Cause those aren't the British releases at all. You know, here we kind of butchered a lot of the UK original pressings by dividing them into two albums. <laughs> Which you know, might have been good, because it gives you more albums to have, and in a way, you know, you really want the original UK presses on good old parley phone, parley phone. Okay, guys, this is LP Loco saying peace out, and have a great one. Post your videos. Peace.